Good morning. I wanted to show you one of my journals today. This one is the sewing theme journal. It's kind of like a junk journal and yet it's not particularly junky. I find images that are in the public domain, some of which are old and some of which are new, and I mix and merge and meld them. So let's have a look and see what I've got in here. So here's the cover. It's got pins on a pin cushion that's been hand sewn. So that's a good starting place. Inside, it's a little card to tell you what I think you might want to do with it, but it's entirely up to you what you decide to do with it. And behind you'll see that there are images, some with text overlaid, but they're, they're all around the theme. So this has some lovely old ephemera that I found. Um, you're welcome to write on the back of these little cards, make notes to yourself, whatever you like. Because this is a technical journal rather than just a journal journal, there's some grid paper to write down ideas. There's places to make notes and some cute ephemera that I found, some cute images of dressmaker dummies and more. Uh, this was from an old book about sewing, sort of basic sewing, sewing skills. So I took that out and put that in because I thought people might enjoy that. Another bit of ephemera to use, it's an advert for thread. Little girl sewing her hat for a doll. Oh, and this paper has been um, soaked in herbal tea, so it's very calming, but it just gives a bit of texture. Again, another advert for sewing. Sewing has been going on so long. Pictures of threads and more. It's got the text overlaying it, just kind of makes it look a little more interesting, a little less straightforward. Some more pages to write on, another advert, this one for an embroidery book, advert for a French sewing machine for a mere 45 francs, pages to write on, again with images that I found in the public domain, more French sewing information, and then here are some patterns, look at the size of their waists, isn't that amazing? Again, there's space on the back to write something if you want a little note for yourself, and another tea satin paper and a woman demonstrating her amazing sewing treadle sewing machine. So this is how it goes through. Oh, and then here is a story I found in the public domain about little Penelope sewing. So it's got all kinds of things. And again, the back is clear, ready for you to write on. And this is the inside of a sewing pattern. Uh, the instructions again, which I thought you might be interested in. Um, a little bit of more a little pattern check for 40 cents or one shilling and eight pence. Um, so it's got plenty of places to write. This one is less of a, this is what I think, and this is more of a practical one, but there's still places if you do just want to use it as a journal to write. Capital pins, look at that. So I use the kind of pink from, that I'd taken from here. So the page lines are in pink and the image is in pink. And so it goes through, and so a lot of the overlying text is pink. So there's plenty of places to write things. There's plenty of little things tucked in. Fairy who's sewing some flowers for some strange reason. Patterns, I love old patterns. So here are some more little cards with old patterns in them. Another adjustable perfect form advert that you know, makes you wonder why we sew the way we do now. The country gentlewoman and all her lovely dresses for the summer, for those who stay at home. Some more advertising, this time for a necky machine. It looks sort of 1960s. More patterns, more sewing machines. So, as you can see, there's more pages so you can sketch. Another sewing machine. Lovely old diagram I found of making a jacket with all the information, with all the sizes and the specifications and where to put the darts. It's just fascinating to see how long sewing has been happening. So the romance lives on, Clark's ONT, JP Coates. Because I'm English, I love finding English ephemera as well as American ephemera. So you will find a mixture. There's an awful lot of American ephemera. Um, and I will leave those with you know, places for you to write, places to tuck things in. There's those ladies with those impossible waists again. Oh, look at this. Chemise sur mesh, made to measure, 
blouses. Boule de Strasbourg, Boulevard de Strasbourg. So, you know, once upon a time, you didn't have to do it all yourself. You could go and have somebody make things for you. More threads, look at all those gorgeous old reels and spools. And this one about how to measure. So it's, it's just all kinds of amazing things that I found about how, the theories of sewing and why people sewed, complete with pages from old books and adverts and look at that beauty. 1863 to 1888, the silver anniversary of the domestic sewing machine. Seems so long ago now. Another compliments of the sewing machine company and some machine sewing just to show. It seems, I like the idea of having lots of little bits and pieces that you can pull out and write on. I've also put these little um, metal, um, I've forgotten the name of them, onto paper clips so that little charms so that you can find where you are. So if you've left a, you know, a, a section for your granddaughter, you can know that that's where you'll find them. So there's more interesting bits and pieces and these page corners are all pictures of sewing and in different places and somebody ironing something beautifully. So some of it's really quite contemporary but an awful lot of it has gorgeous ephemera from all over the place around the internet. Look at that dress. Can you imagine making that with the slantomatic certified home sewing botany? I mean, it's just astonishing how sewing has been portrayed as liberating people, women at the same time keeping them slightly enslaved. It's a very interesting sort of sociological perspective as well as everything else. Corticelli uh, silk, more instructions, more sewing, another beautiful card showing a scene with some people on a lake and a pin in it to hold it to show how important it is. Another French one. She looks like she's knitting sewing stitches, so, but it's for simplicity patterns, which have been around for a long time. More sewing supplies, fitting unusual figures, since we all have unusual figures, explanations of how to change the pattern to make them to fit better. <coughs> Look at this. Look at all those darts to make for the teeny tiny waists. It's just astonishing. sewing with her mother making her trousseau. Little girl sewing, I mean clearly images of sewing are just everywhere. It's, it's wonderful. More sewing machines. Look at that amazing dress and yet she's still looking in the mirror longingly at the sewing machine. And then a little key. <coughs> Another amazing corset to get one of those tiny little waists. A pattern from, I can't remember when, I wish I could remember. But look at that little dress for the little girl, a little coat for the little girl. So it was for a 12 year old. And there's the cutting guide on the back of the envelope. It shows how little things have changed and yet how much they've changed. Having sewn all my life, it just amuses me to see how much is the same, how much is different. Look at those buttons. Wouldn't you just love to get into that shop? Embroidery anglaise, more sewing machines, more patterns. <coughs> you get the gist. It's, it's oh, there's fabrics. It, it is just, you know, if you love to sew, this is going to give you all kinds of things to look at and enjoy. Pull out, write on the back, make notes. Little baby advertising thread, skirt binding, dressing Mary Ann. Even the little girl is learning how to sew and make a dress for her little girl. So it, it kind of connects us with people who've sewn for years and years and years. And uh, Galon de Cotton. It, it just amused me to go through and find all these things and find the patterns and find the sketches and see how what we're doing these days is really not so very, very different from what 
our mothers, grandmothers, and generations and generations have gone. Ten cents off any advertised pattern. Good until till June the 1st, 1900. So I think that's a little bit out of date, but it's still kind of fun to find. There's an amazing dress with another improbably tiny waist. Elias Howe, the father of the sewing machine, other than Singer. Or amazing buttons. Look at that skirt! All those flounces and tucks. Can you imagine how long that would have taken to make and to get all those prints all beautifully aligned? So I want some denim because lots of us started sewing with denim. And there's Our Lady again, Hall's Bazaar form. Another dress. She's got a slightly less improbable waist but still very tiny. What else have we got in here? sewing machines, more buttons. I'm not really obsessed with buttons, you don't understand, just quite obsessed. Pin boxes. Another of these plates with all the all the darts and all the places for putting interfacing. It's just fascinating. A Norfolk jacket. I had such a wonderful time looking for all these things. How to measure. I mean, some of the stuff is still relevant now. It's, it's quite amazing. It hasn't changed that much. Little heart buttons, thread, little girl peering in somebody's sewing basket. There's gorgeous fabrics, aren't they lovely? Like seersucker. The Philadelphia Fashions Tailor's Archetypes. That was from a class that was held in Philadelphia ages and ages ago, 18, 27 to 28. And then there's the cover that was made of fabric um, that I designed and sewed. And then I sewed the pages in. So that's the walkthrough.